I could talk about Lee Zimmerman all day, but I'd much rather hear from Lee himself. Lee, thank you for joining us in conversation with. That's the intro, and then you will say, "Nice to be here," or you know, "How, how long is it? How long? How much okay. longer we got to yeah, do this?" Lee Zimmerman is an artist living in Minnesota. He is an internationally known silk painter and is recognized as a distinguished silk artist by Spin a nonprofit organization of silk artists, painters, educators, and practitioners. He holds a PhD in electrical engineering and has written articles in engineering, computer science, experimental psychology, and art. Lee has performed live large-scale silk painting all over the world with symphony orchestras, theaters, operas, flamenco, jazz, pop, and alternative musicians. He has a growing audience of which I am one, for his pen and ink drawings on Twitter under the name at ZIM2918, at Zim2918. I could talk about Lee Zimmerman all day, but I'd much rather hear from Lee himself. Lee, thank you for joining us in conversation with. Thank you for having me. Lee, I'd like to read some words for you and ask you to use those words to create a pen and ink drawing for us. Is, is that okay? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Good, good. I appreciate that. I'd also like to ask, if possible, that you narrate, if possible, your thoughts verbally as you create for our listeners who may not be participating visually. And for anyone who's listening, we may go silent, and that may be part of the actual narration of thoughts. Here's the words. These words are from a collaborator, Lee, that you know, V. Van Gogh. <laughs> Touch me the way the moon touched the sun today. Okay, so what I'm gonna do a couple of things. First of all, I'm just gonna draw kind of random lines. The, the pen I'm using is a really crappy, um, it's a, a Pilot G2, 1.0 millimeter. And what that means is it's a, a bold pen, but it means it's really cheap and really leaky. And I use the leak uh, of the ink on the paper. Also, the paper that I'm using is 11 by 14, and it's not very absorbent. So it allows things to, uh, it doesn't allow things to soak in right away. So let's see. So what I did is I drew a figure. Um, it's kind of scribbly. Now I'm putting in the moon. And then one of the things that I found, and you'll see that I'm moving the, the ink. In a given direction. One of the things that I found is that if you do something right at the edge, like I'm taking the ink and pulling it away from the center of the moon, what it does is it makes the moon itself looks like look like it's glowing. Looks like it's brighter than the paper itself. So now I'm going after the internal face. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to do something special in a second. So I'm trying to pull this in. And what it's going to do is going to make them the moon kind of glow. So the last thing I want to do, and I'm going to try this. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll try it. Um, one of the things that I do is I can I move really fast when I paint. And uh, one of the things that allows me to move fast is I'm laying down the ink. And if I want to get more of a, uh, if I want to push the ink around more, 
I can use a little bit of water on my uh, hands to do that. So there you go. I think that's a good, that's a pretty good image there. Beautiful. Bravo, sir. Thank you so much. What a treasure. Do you want to describe the finished image? And I'm, and then after you do, I'm going to read the words one more time. Well, the finished image is, um, it's a woman and her face, she's looking upwards. And then uh, there's a, uh, she's kind of silhouetted in the, uh, in the a full moon. And the full moon looks like it glows. It looks like it's lighter than the uh, surrounding uh, page itself. So. And the words by V. Van Gogh are again, touch me the way the moon touched the sun today. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Lee. It's, di it's difficult to want to uh, pull away from the art because I want to stay there. We could talk about that all day. Thank you. That was glorious. And um, I, I think that really is helpful for those who obviously are listening right now, but I think even more so uh, for people who are watching and listening. I think that's probably something, I, I don't know if you've done it before. And I don't, uh, honestly, everyone who's listening, we didn't plan this. <laughs> we just, we're just making it happen. Uh, I think it might be very instructional for folks that, that love your work and also might be interested in trying to to be, uh, you know, uh, in, in the, in the right. same kind of uh, your artistic endeavor that you are. Leah, at one point in your journey as an artist, you began to, uh, I'm going to use the word transition, it may not be the right one, from being primarily a silk painter to become more of a performance artist. And maybe we saw a little bit of that today. And I well, want I, to read, I, I want to read from something, if you don't mind. I sure. want to read from a specific time when you seemingly, in my view, maybe identified that transition and it's called silk painting while hanging from a thread, which is itself, by the way, very beautiful. Uh, but let me read the opening words and then we'll chat. I am floating 30 feet above the concrete floor in the dark. I can hear the murmuring of the audience as I strap the paintbrush onto a three foot long piece of bamboo. The lights switch on, illuminating a tower of white silk. As the luscious notes of a solo cello begin to resonate through the auditorium, I begin to paint. If you could, please, Lee, please tell us about that experience that I just read about so our audience can understand what that was and how you arrived, I'd say, from silk painting to performance artist. Well, let's uh, let me start with silk painting because it's very strange, and and I do it in a strange way. I do it different than most silk painters. Um, uh, what I found was I uh, I started messing around with silk. Silk painting is painting with dyes on silk, and uh, I found that um, that I had a good control over where the edges land, so I could draw images into this into the silk painting almost freehand without and be able to sort of push those uh, push push the edges around um, the uh, I used to do a lot of I do a lot of uh, figure painting and figure drawing and so that's to um, that's sort of like an, an exercise and I remember doing figure painting I'd bring in the the silk and the dyes and the models would um, uh, who were modeling it was usually a bunch of artists sitting around and then we were and then there's usually a model. The models really enjoyed it because the silk, the dyes go right through the silk so they can see what I'm painting as I paint it. And, and uh, when I thought about it for a while, that's when I started doing these performances. Um, what I would do is set up, and I go really fast. So I would set up an eight foot, um, eight foot tall, four foot wide panel of silk I would be behind it, and then as I paint with the paint brushes, as I paint with the dyes, the audience doesn't see me, but they see the dyes coming up and the image being formed, and that's kind of magical. And and so those are the kind of performances that I uh, that I did. The the one that you're talking about specifically was really kind of interesting. Um, it was I was contacted by, it's called the the DAIP. It's the Domestic Abuse Intervention Program uh, at locally. And they were celebrating like 25 years or something like that. And uh, they wanted to, to do a fundraiser, but they wanted to kind of also create a sacred space. <laughs> yeah. 
And I probably shouldn't have told, told them this, but anyway, what we did was we rigged a, a panel of silk that was 36 feet tall and about four feet wide. And I, I, was, I was hidden on the sides. Um, I contacted somebody who was uh, from the local area climbing club and they helped me rig a, a setup where they could lift me up that thing and I could paint. They couldn't quite get me to the last part. And so that's why I had to use, I used a bamboo stick and I took the brushes and wrapped it around the bamboo stick. The other part that I didn't describe about this was I had a, a Velcro vest. I made a vest out of Velcro and that's where I stuck my dyes and my brushes so that as they were lifting me up, I could do everything. And, the, and, and again, the audience didn't see me. They just saw the result of what was happening. I, I think of the, the description that you have, I think of as, as a theatrical person myself of a scrim, and that's the word I would yes. use. And, and the idea of a scrim in theater is something that actually exists for the audience to see. And depending on how it's lit, it can turn a one scene into another. But you, you, you literally create the scene as yes. the audience is part. That, that's... Well, I, oh, I was going to say, I, I mean, that was one instance. There's another one that was just magical. Um, I did, um, they did a, a performances of the, the musical, The Secret Garden. Um, I don't know if you know it. I, of course. You, you probably know the book, right? Sure, <laughs> or, sure. I... Um, but in the, the Secret Garden is interesting in that it starts out miserable because the young girl's family dies of cholera. She's sent to her morose uncle's house and uh, spooky house and all that stuff. Anyway, it starts really bad and goes, and and uh, goes upward. Um, what they did, well, um, my daughter was cast as the little girl in the secret garden for the, the regional playhouse theater. And so I happened to talk to the director who wanted to make the garden part of the show. And I said, you know, I do this trick. <laughs> anyway, they threw out their staging and they set it up so that it was um, it was basically the stage had five huge panels of silk and during the each performance i created the garden as the a choreographed with what was going on stage that's and it gorgeous worked really really well it was very very powerful I've been in theater for many years and I've, I've known enough, I've performed. And one performance that I was in was called The Laramie Project about Matthew mm -hmm. Shepard. And I right. love the show, it's very powerful. And I'll never forget what our scene, scenic designer did. He had this beautiful scrim at the back that was lit a certain way and it, would, it was basically the, the Wyoming hillside. Mm -hmm. And then the lighting changed at this moment. I played Matthew Shepard's father. Dennis Shepard. And as I was coming out to deliver that, you know, the, the monologue that I had to deliver, the lighting changed and it turned into the fence, which yeah. Matthew had died on. And to this day, I can barely think about it or talk about it right now. I haven't thought, thought about it for ages. It was uh, so powerful. And so the beauty of using Scrim and then the idea of what you're doing really appeals to me. Uh, there's magic it was, in it. There's magic it was very, in it. The funny thing, I'll, I'll just tell you some of the funny things. I mean, you probably know from per performances. Um, I had, um, I had the whole thing, the, what I was painting, I had it mapped out cause it was choreographed to what was happening. And so inside there were like these little tunnels, each painting was different. There were five of them across stage and they started out blank and, uh, oh, well, like it began at the very beginning, I would do, uh, uh in about a minute and a half, I would do a woman in Victorian dress and a uh, life size and then and uh not much color just sort of black and white and then uh, then uh, the woman with victorian dress would come out and sing she would start singing <laughs> in the next my goodness over. oh my goodness and, and then at, but at the end what i did is i took that woman and i melded her into a fountain of in the garden so a greek fountain in the garden so as i uh i could change things as i went along and uh, the, the funny thing was, so I had these panels that I had to move between. Um, and of course, there's lots of actors backstage. <laughs> right. 
and mostly I was I was traveling and I had dyes. Mostly I had black dyes in my my thing. I had the colors set, but I had to keep the black with me. And let me tell you, I would come I would come through with these dyes and they would like just part, boom, 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 so they wouldn't get anything on the costume. It was oh, very interesting. Have... I you can know, imagine, yes, I, as, as, a, as an actor, I can imagine how I would have avoided you at that point. A little scary to see someone with ink. <laughs> but the, the whole thing was, it was, it was such a wonderful, um, uh, it was wonderful to be able to tell a story with the audience. I mean, to tell a story, um, I don't know how to, how to say this, where it's the music and the story and the audience and the choreography is all kind of in the background is all moving in the same direction. Yeah, it was, it's, it's it was really it's a that, lot of fun. It's that uh, that that real um, joining this this perfect quintessential example of when everything uh, really melts. You know, uh, we're talking about storytelling, and I know you use words sometimes. Uh, you don't always use words in your drawings in your art, but when you do, they are often from poetry or literature. So I'm curious are some of the words that you choose are they are, it, are the words inspired by the art or is the art inspired by the words What's it can it, it can be a little bit of both um i can have an image and and i can maybe search through um i like looking through the twitter poets mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of twitter poets um uh and uh, i like i think primarily because they don't get really wordy <laughs> they have to limit the number of words. So it's a lot tighter. Right. And that allows me um, to be sharper on the image, if, it, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> it does. Well, for um, our listeners, and I'm glad we're talking about this, I want to say that Lee's work is available and you can contact Lee, one of the easiest ways regarding any art that you might be interested in uh, through his Twitter account, uh, which is going to be listed down below in the description. Uh, Lee, you also have created some work on commission if someone wants to create original work for them, what's your process or guidelines for that? Well, you know, I don't really, I have, um, let's see, with me, I do this because um, it's part of me, hmm. right? And, and so I have to kind of feel it to express it. It has to be, um, so often um, I'll try a commission if it's an interesting idea. I mean, I'll try to do something if it's an interesting idea. The other thing is that it has to be um, uh, not just an, uh, it, it helps if it's something that I, that, that I feel too. Um, well, when we're, we're talking about feelings, and I just want to say in full disclosure, I have commissioned some work from you, and I want to ask you about that work now. I'm going to transition directly to it right now. I provided you with a sentence. It was one sentence. It was from my book, Dear Stephen Michael's Mother. And I also asked you to use an image you had created and reimagine it with my words. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, you know what finally happened is I disclosed to you that I was an adoptee and that I had recently found a, my biological sister. And so there was this <laughs> just collection of data that I threw at you. I realized that I might have dumped a whole lot of criteria you know, into, into my little idea or commission for you. How do you process? Because you did do it. And of course, it's one of the things that drew me to you to ask you to be here today. Uh, and I'm forever grateful for the work you did for me. How do you process that kind of data and translate it through your work? Tell us about how you well, feel I can't, it. Right, and I can't, uh, I can't be you. And, but I can, um, I, I am human and I do feel things. The, and when I do things for, for people, I mean, if there's a request and I, and I try to function in that request, um, it really helps if the person is willing to let me bring my artistry to it. A lot of times people, when they make requests for commissions, they have an idea of what they wanna see. Yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> Cause I'm not, because uh, I don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I mean, you'll see a lot of my drawings. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know how to describe them in words. Well, you saw, I, I think I sent you that, that link where it shows a whole bunch of different drawings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I think that, that that gives you a sense of sort of the range and what I'm trying to do. 
And what I really want to do is I want to have an image that it it might sing to me, but it also sings to other people about sort of what's common inside of us. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. I'm not good with words. I'm better on paper. <laughs> well, you sometimes but, you, you referred earlier to you sometimes post. Uh, we're talking about words, but um, you name a lot of what you post uh, on Twitter and, and any of your work. But you sometimes post something untitled and you talked about that briefly. And I want to get back to it because I'm thoughtful of that. So you're some of these are untitled pen and ink drawings and you ask your Twitter followers. And I love the way you say it any words for this drawing <laughs> and that's it you just leave it open and I, I want to read a few examples there's a post recently that i loved and um i want to read a few examples of responses to this one post which is an extraordinary image uh, of two people it's you know you called it a scribble earlier and you really have to stare at it because you can see two people full embrace one has their head tilted upward with a facial expression, I don't know, my word would be ecstasy. The other has their head tilted downward and it's their face is really partially buried, I think, into the breast of the other. And it's this beautiful, mm -hmm. it's powerful and it's complex. And I find hard to find words for these things. And so you're asking any words? And here are some of the Twitter followers uh, that uh, responded. I'll just read them. With our eyes closed, I feel you staring right into me, breathing without words. Lay your body next to mine and don't say anything. Sanctuary. Heartbeat. And this one's an interesting Google Maps woman directions question mark. <laughs> and then the embrace. And finally, one word home. I want to know what you think of those responses when you get them. Does that guide you in your work? And, and what, I guess, really, Lee, why do you ask uh, what, in essence, are virtual strangers to participate in this process? Well, that, that, that's the whole reason to go. I mean, that's the joy of Twitter that I've discovered, <laughs> or at least the, the way I approach it, is um, um, what I found with the drawing is that I might intend to draw something but when someone else sees it they see something quite different and so it's it it interests me as to what they see and it, and especially when i come up with images that are sort of uh a little bit ambiguous as to what the story is um and sometimes i just don't have names for them or or issues but i know that there's like a story behind them and i just it, it's my way of gauging um uh what uh, what people are actually seeing and and uh, whether I'm having an impact. I mean, in the end, I, what I'd like to do is I like I like it when my work has an impact on when people see things in them. And what's so odd about art, what I've, I mean, what I'm discovering more and more, it almost has nothing to do with the picture I draw on the page. <laughs> you know, art is really what someone brings to it. it what they their own history um, if I do it right um, I can uh, evoke some memory in someone I don't know what that is but I can do it with a, a very brief line I mean it's like a poem that way exactly uh, that's exactly one reading my mind and, it, and it, that actually makes it more powerful I think it makes it more impactful in other words, you don't you don't create your art and then actually actually after that you don't create an instruction manual for people to interpret your art you right uh, same I love it I think i've heard it somewhere before before a poet was asked someone was asked what does this poem mean and the question was thrown back well, what do you think it means. <laughs> and and I would say that you're you're really being genuine when you say you're not even sure what it means, and so when we create something, especially the way you do, which you say quickly, and I just love to use maybe a phrase in the moment, you know, as as short or as long as it is, you're in the moment, and when that moment's gone, how do you explain the moment that passed? It's awfully difficult to do that because a day from now, a week from now, a month or a year or a century from now. Uh, that's going to be a different moment to whoever's looking at it and whoever, and it could be just you. Do you ever read, do you ever make something, look at it a year later and say, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, of course, all the time. In fact, I, I I often can't remember that I've made things, except I'm, except it's very distinct. <laughs> My 
scribble is is uh, I can recognize it's mine. <laughs> I, I can imagine I can I, too. But, I can uh, in a in a heartbeat. I can, and I have seen other times where I've seen people use words with say scribbles or just drawings, and I'm like, oh, that's not Lee. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> that's not Lee. But um, yeah, is it? Uh, do I? I think I do that often more with writing. I mean, if I have to do writing, then um, uh, the writing, it does it more. With the images, the images almost can bring me back to that moment of when they were being created. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, it's strange because I, I feel like I express myself more better when I'm actually doing drawing, when I'm actually can I, drawing. Can, can I just suggest one thing? I know I write, and when I write, I edit, and then I edit. And then I edit, and then I edit, then I ask somebody else to edit, then we, we edit some more and we proofread. And by the time we're done, I don't even know what it was, you know, two you versions started. ago, <laughs> or even not at the beginning, but I mean, my gosh, I, the 14th edit, I don't remember the 14th from the ninth. But when you're doing something like you do, uh, it is again, it's momentary, and it's, it's almost in a blast of inspiration, and it doesn't get edited, it doesn't get retooled. Right. Right, I don't get a I don't get a second chance at it. I, I think that's something that I learned from the the silk painting, because you don't get a second chance with the dyes. <laughs> do, do you? I will ask. Do you? Because uh, these sketches that you just did earlier, uh, and um, I, and I, I loved watching you do that. Um, by the way, uh, there's always a moment. I remember the first time I ever saw one of your uh, little videos where you said, "Hey, I'm just going to show you what I do." And mm -hmm. my wife, my wife and I were watching it. I said, honey, watch this. I, you know, I, I hadn't even watched it. And the two of us were watching it. And then all of a sudden we just saw scribble, 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 scribble. And all of a sudden we just couldn't breathe because <laughs> you just, all of a sudden something appeared and we just, how the hell did he do that? You know, what happened? What just happened? What just happened? You really, you can't breathe. You stop breathing for a minute. And I just had that happen again. And it surprised me, surprised me because I saw, I knew you were going to draw the face and I've gotten used to maybe that now. Cause that's what took my breath away the first time. How you, I'm like, what's he scribbling? And I'm like, oh, where did that come from? But this one was the moon. All of a sudden I saw you move to the moon. And I mean, I saw a crescent and then the crescent became a full moon. And I'm like, I can't keep up. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, I'm, it, and actually, honestly, that's one of the things I like doing. I like doing the performing. I'm trying to figure out a way to do it a little bit more. Twitter only allows me a minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> right. So that's why those things are kind of really brief. Right. Um, but I've been well, wanting to do something that, that is uh, sort of a bigger performance kind of thing. Well, so, I, can't, I can't offer you uh, quite that, but um, since, you, uh, since you said that, I'm hoping that I can ask you to point your camera one more time and create another pen and ink drawing with some words I've chosen, if that would be possible. Would you? Would that be okay? Sure. Yeah, sure. And uh, these are not my words, uh, so you can go ahead and point your camera down. Uh, these words were written by Rain, R-A-I-N-E, Rain Cooper, and is titled Love. Uh, this is a little longer than the last one, so um, everyone listen. I think how we need to be loved as adults stems from our childhood or lack thereof. If you were abandoned, you need to be smothered to know every second that you're adored. But as a child, you were always alone. So the very love you crave makes you feel suffocated and crawling white knuckled to get out. And so, this war rages inside of us until we have exhausted ourselves and perhaps those who were brave enough to extend their hands. It's all you, Lee.
know if I can pull this off, but I'm going to try. So I think I'm going to stop there. Yeah. And I didn't describe anything, so. No, that's fine. I, 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 I to, to all of our listeners who maybe are were not visually participating, I thought this was better um, silent. And you could hear the brush strokes. You could hear the pen strokes, I should say. And uh, I'll be honest, Lee, I, I had to stop looking at some point, especially when you started to to draw the child. And maybe you could, for our uh, maybe listeners and not not viewers, to just describe what what just happened. What do you have there? For what us? I uh, what I usually start with is if I'm doing something like this, I'll do a, a big scribble to kind of give myself an idea of the size of the page and where I want things to kind of fall. Then I, what I did is I, I pulled the woman's face out. And again, it was just a scribble. I'm just trying to lay her in. And then I pulled in the, the man's face. And uh, now I had a man and a woman and they're facing each other. And I thought uh, the poem had something about um, love. And I was thinking that an expression of love as a child and uh, between a man and a woman. And so then I tried to pull in the child uh, and, and put them in. It's kind of odd when you try to do people of different ages because their um, their head shapes and things are all kind of a little bit different, but that's that tries to project um, uh, what you, anyway, I was just trying to project that those kinds of things. And uh, so, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and no, it's, it's wonderful. If you want to pull back up uh, to sure. to the to your your view, I thank you for using your technology. So um, don't throw that away. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you that question. Do you find yourself? Um, I know many people who write or do art. They tend to repaint over things. They tend to throw out their writings. They do you throw things away? Do you find well, yourself I, starting and ending things and saying I'll that's do a lot not of, what I wanted to do? Well, a lot of. Um, I'll do that occasionally if I have a if I'm really intent on what an, on an, on a certain idea. Um, that doesn't happen very often because I don't think the end result is very good mm. from me from the way I do it. I'm not a good editor, <laughs> um, so uh, mostly I tend to I tend to keep a lot. Um, I'm starting to uh, to be a better editor trying to get rid of them because I have so many drawings. Um, uh, the other thing is, yeah, I've been doing, um, I've been doing uh, a lot of uh, uh, figure model drawing. Yes. When when COVID started, I used to do draw. We would do. I would go and meet with a group of artists, and we would do. There would be a model, and um, we would do drawing, and I do that about once a week, uh, and it's kind of like calisthenics uh, for. Uh, it, it kind of allows me to make sure that everything is sort of working or make it demands that I do it, try to bring something into what I visually look at. So it's got a different set of demands. Um, and then when COVID hit, all of those groups just disappeared, right? They couldn't meet anymore. Um, and I don't do very well with photographs or, um, uh, uh, even videos are not very good for me. I don't, I don't draw very well from them. Everything gets flat and dead for me. <laughs> so, uh, but what I discovered, I, I, I was frustrated. I was looking around and I found a bunch of, there's a, a lot of Zoom model drawing sessions. What happened was, uh, this happened all over the world, right? All these, uh, there, were, there were models all over the world that were actually making a living. <laughs> And all of a sudden their livelihood went away. Right. And then they figured out how to go on Zoom. And, uh, and then um, I figured out how to join those groups finally. And it was uh, so like, um, um, I will do uh, figure drawing 
so there's models from um uh a lot of them are from london the london academy of fine art models uh there are models from portugal and spain and uh colombia um and uh so i can enter sessions like that and and there'll be a whole bunch of different artists so you can kind of see what other people are doing and that kind of thing but wow and, so, but so we'll a lot of what a lot models. of what i a lot of what i see on twitter right now recently those are virtual those are uh zoom those are related. virtual those are zoom Ooh. model drawing sessions and what i do is i'll as as the session goes um i'll just post them <laughs> Dunk, dunk, dunk. Literally, so that's, that's what, what you, that's what we're might, seeing. Oh, you're genius! Right, beautiful. What was there? Um, so there's like, you'll see a model that has, uh, like, is wearing a funny hat, and they'll all of a sudden be in several of my drawings, and that's because I'm doing a model drawing session. That's um, so great. But it's been oh, really no, interesting. Now, now I'll be able to feel the heartbeat of what you're doing as my Twitter feed rolls through. I'll say, "Oh, I know what he's yeah. doing right now. He's doing his yeah, session." Yeah. And it's sort of it's sort of a little bit, um, uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt because I'll mm. I'll do all of these things um, at one time, and and those are less about the story. Does that make sense? Yeah. Those are less about the story and um, more about me just trying to focus on what I'm what I'm actually seeing. Yeah, well, I yeah. think the I, the immediate the immediacy of it, and the you know, of course, the virtual piece, but also the immediacy of it, uh, it doesn't allow you to really think very much, does it? No, no, yeah, it is. It's kind of a meditation, so yeah. it works very well that way. Right. Um, that's a great word. Yeah, in fact, it, the thing that's been so amazing, um, they're kind of even though things are releasing a little bit, I think they're going to keep doing some of these things. Um, one of them, like I think last year one of the sessions there's a session out of scotland the guy that runs it is in scotland and they literally did 24 hours of models all around the world every time zone they had different models on on zoom and uh um, anyway it was just amazing that's really. that is amazing because you know there there's all these things people say well there's these uh, silver linings to the pandemic but you know there's there's ideas that i think came out that we could recreate in the future even though it's not a necessity uh but what an opportunity it's like having having musicians being able to participate from every part of the globe uh and this is just another example of that that technology has allowed us to at least tinker with if not do well, in in the past i've only been able you know they're usually local local models that we do um but it's really it it's not only have i been able to draw uh, like there's one guy who's a, a model for the uh, london academy of fine arts um who you've probably seen his torso on drawing books he's probably one really? of the most drawn person in the world really but um but you know, I met him, and and uh, and uh, there's also uh, yeah, and so there's like drawing sessions, and, and this would be great. In fact, I'm, I'm planning on if we can ever get out of here, traveling a little bit, and and possibly meeting up with some of these people. Um, uh, so that's been one of the things that I've been doing. Another thing that's been interesting is um, I don't know if you've seen the work by. Do you know who John Gom is? I'm not sure. No, I'll I'll push that up there. Sure. He's a guitar player from London, and uh, uh, his uh, it's uh, J O N, and his last name is G O M M. Okay. And uh, uh, anyway, if you watch a video of, of him, he's unbelievably amazing guitar player. Um, I did all the artwork for his uh, latest album that he just put out, and we met on Twitter, and he liked my response to it. And the funny thing is, is that the way he creates his songs are so uh, controlled and edited like you. And he was just amazed that I would respond to them with uh, with these drawings. And so um, that that was really exciting to put uh, uh, to to do those things. So I've met been able. The funny thing is, by living here in my basement for a year, I've been able to meet people <laughs> from all over the world. 
And that's been a really incredible experience. So. I've had similar experiences because of this YouTube channel. And I was, my initial uh, idea was to have a YouTube channel regarding certain topics, which I was usually speaking of. It was me. And then mm -hmm. I decided maybe every couple of months I'll do an interview to kind of highlight someone else's perspective. And I would do them in my basement studio because it was local, but they were local people. And then mm -hmm. the pandemic hit and I kept doing my individual videos, but I very, you know, I kind of started scratching my head. I was, you know, I really liked doing the in-person. I like having somebody right next to me. And then mm -hmm. eventually I gave up because the pandemic was a little elongated at that point. And I said, maybe I should just do it. So I waited till I think it was last March, this past, you know, 2021. And finally, I just said, Kevin, just ask somebody to do it on Zoom. And I did it. And it has become now a weekly or I try to put one out every three weeks because it can take a little time to get the right people and have these kind of conversations. But it has been from across the across the country now. And I think in Canada, I don't know if I've gotten. Oh, I have some had someone from the UK, from Ireland, <laughs> things like that. But, you know, I mean, I, the only thing that's limiting me introducing myself uh, or or you know on this channel other people to to everyone is just me just me reaching out it takes nothing to reach out uh, and um, well on that note i am just gloriously honored that you would spend the time today uh, lee zimmerman is an artist living in minnesota he is an internationally known silk painter and is recognized as a distinguished silk artist by silk painter international or spin a nonprofit organization of silk artists, painters, educators, and practitioners. He holds a PhD in electrical engineering and has written articles in engineering, computer science, experimental psychology, and art. Lee has performed live, large-scale silk painting all over the world with symphony orchestras, theaters, operas, flamenco, jazz, pop, and alternative musicians. He has a growing audience, and I am proud to be one of them for his pen and ink drawings on Twitter under the name at ZIM2918, Zim, 2918. And I just can't say enough. I hope we get to talk again sometime in the future and maybe we'll see each other in person. Thank you so much, Lee. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you joining us in conversation with. Have a great day. Thanks.